Good afternoon, welcome to the instructional video for this Remo Super Brig 69 Plus. It's a 2020 model and it's based on the Fiat 2.3 140 brake horse cab. So walking around the vehicle first then we'll move on inside. So we've got a full awning fitted to it. You can just see on the top we've got an aerial for the Teleco. The awning I'll send you a separate video of how to use that. But behind the driver's side we have one key that opens all the lockers but we have a gas locker area. So this will house two six kilogram bottles and you have your regulator just up there. Behind that we have the habitation door which has its own little awning light. The door just simply opens like so. And on the door itself you've got a fly screen and we've got a blind. Just there, manually lock it from that little lever there and open it again just like so. Behind that, we've got an external main socket, which will have been added for the original customer as an option. And we've got the fridge vents, just top and bottom, just there. That's for the oven and the fridge freezer. Behind that, we've got a toilet cassette. To remove this, you must have the blade valve closed inside. Lift up the little handle, slide it all the way out. Empty it using the little blue cap. And by pressing the little blue button at the top there, that will empty out all the vacuum. When completely empty, push it back in, allow it to just sit in place there, and then that will allow you then to put your sachets or your fluid inside to use the toilet again. Behind that, we have a external shower point, just there, it's the bullfinch type. And we have two locks, which open with the single keys just there, to hold the door. So moving on into the garage, we've got little eyelets to tie your items in there on all four corners. We've also got an external or an extra mains and 12 volt socket, as well as the switch for the electronic bed. So this has a rise and fall bed. So what you'll need to do is turn the key to the on position, press the button and that will then rise the bed to its highest position or lower it to its lowest position. Just make sure that no one or nothing is in contact with this when you're rising and falling it, but that will allow you to alter the height of the actual uh, garage area that you're in. So to the side of that, we've got a little locker area, and this is where you will find the boiler. Now within the boiler itself here, you have got, just down in this little area here, your frost protection valve. So this protection valve is just this little unit here see my finger and it has a diamond at the top and a little push button at the front you'll need to make sure that that diamond is across you can just see it just there so it's pointing across the side of the vehicle and the button is just pressed in which is on the front I'll probably show you more when you come to see it because it's quite difficult in this area with it being quite dark to see but that is where your frost protection valve is and that is the operation button that will need to be pressed in place when you are wanting to fill up the hot water on the system. That is located just in that area, just there. So we can see from the video that we've got another opening door on the opposite side, so you can gain access from both sides. And when closing, they simply will just push together and press the handle in, press the handle in, and then you will be able to lock the door. To the rear of the vehicle, we've got a bike rack. It's got two arms on it. You can buy additional arms and it's got four rails, so it can take up to four bikes on here. And we've got a reversing camera, which is mounted high up just there. Again, onto this side, we have got the access into the garage area from this side of the vehicle. Again, same idea, close it and then press the lock in, press the lock in, and then you can lock it with your one key to secure the garage area. In front of that, we've got the flue for the heater. So you don't need to do anything with this, but just be careful it does get warm when the heating is on. The next locker area is where all your electrics are held. So you'll see you've got your leisure battery located there. Next to your mains charger, the solar panel controller, and your main fuse box just located there. We also have an isolator where you can turn off the power to the vehicle as well. So that's all in that one area just nice and neat for you. And again, in an area that's locked using the key. The main input is just there. And forward of that, we have your point for filling the fresh water 
again using the one key. The wastewater can just be found underneath the vehicle using that handle and it simply pulls out and will release the water from the middle of the tank. So that's your wastewater outlet handle just there. Forward of that, there is provisions for you to put another ledger battery into there and that's where that would be housed. And again, simply just one key will give you access into there. Cab area, you are 2020, so you will have add blue as well as your diesel. So that is located just there. We have the bonnet release catch, which can be found there. Toolkit, which is supplied from Fiat to the manufacturers. Glove box in the front. Vehicle battery is located underneath here. So if you're wondering where it is, it's underneath that panel in the middle, just there. The blinds themselves have Remy's cab blinds on both the side windows. And again, pinching together, we'll come to Tina across for that front window. So nice and neat, easy to use, and dead discreetly away there. So moving to the wing mirrors, they do manually fold in, but then they will operate from the controls inside. And finally on the bonnet, you'll find if you lift it up in the middle, just above the Fiat badge, there's a little yellow lever that will give you access to under the engine bay. Where your main items here are screen wash in the corner, to the left, oil and dipstick, negative and positive terminals just underneath there. So that's the outside of the Remo done, let's move on inside. So now inside the vehicle, we've got the main control panels that can be found just above the oven and the fridge freezer. The water, one thing you will have to do before you fill up the water on the fresh water is just inside the tank here. If I can just show you, just down there, you will see there is a little lever. This lever is for your drain on the fresh water. So as it's down like it is now, it will allow you to fill up the fresh water. Should you lift up that lever, that will drain the fresh water tank. So that's got to be in place for the water to actually fit. And that can be found in the tank by unscrewing the little red tank. And then there is a little plate that sits over the top of that to hide it away. Just like so. The seating area lifts up here as well. So if you've got people that want to travel with you, that will lift up to so allow you then to make a full L-shaped seating area. And then there we are made up with the L-shaped seating area and the single seat to that side. So that's your water. To put the power onto the main unit, you'll need to just press the control panel just there. Each of these items will light up and tell you what you are actually doing. So what we've got, if we're moving around the vehicle here, we've got the auxiliary, so that will work on your USBs. We've got the pump on, and again, if you press it, you'll also see it lights above the line, and it will turn off as and when you want to do it. We've got the external awning light, and again, it will show up above to say that it's been selected. And we've got the main light control for the lights inside the vehicle. We've also got the main power on and off just there. So that's your main control panel controlling power through into your vehicle. You've got some little arrows at the bottom here, which will take you then through the options of your leisure battery voltages and your water levels and things like that. So that's your main control panel. You will get a handbook with this of how to operate it, but it is quite straightforward once you turn the main items on. So once you've turned the power on, some of your lights will come on automatically. Otherwise you'll need to go around the vehicle and turn on the different lights in the area and you'll find on this that there'll be several areas for the lights to come on some of them are little touch screen ones so like that one there is a little touch one these ones generally a touch as well underneath and again same in the rear you've got little touch lights that will either dim or brighten up so once we're all lit up again we've got lights sort of everywhere in this vehicle Again, just remembering where some of your switches might be hidden. So in the bathroom, underneath your cabinet, we'll turn off your light switch for your toilet area and for the actual shower area. So that's where that's located. But you will find there's different lights around. So at the back underneath, we've got some light switches just hiding under here, which will turn off the 
light switches for the ambient lighting in the bedroom area as well as the low level lighting so lights up nice and bright and airy so now we're all lit up we we'll want to look at options of blinds so these then slide down and clip over and then pinch together and lift up so there your actual light switches uh, your actual blinds opening the blinds you'll see that they've got little press buttons so press them in don't do it without pressing it in because you can break them and then literally lift them out and that will hold it out just like that we have curtains as well which have been added and again pull it tight make sure it's all in secured and then that is your blinds they're the same all the way through the vehicle roof vents so slide it across as the blind and then back as the fly screen to lift it up you need to press this little button down here pull the handle towards you and that will lift up and ventilate the roof vent please make sure that you bring these down for traveling now it's quite important that it's clipped in place over there and that is the same in the rear area of the vehicle too so to get the bed down what we need to do similar idea is we want to turn the key and then we'll have to put it down one thing you will have to do is just be careful and mindful of cushions underneath so that they're not in any way if they are just move them away and that will allow you to gain access to it these lights will just press on and turn off and again you've got little eyelets little straps here which will allow you to put the safety nets which is that on the front and it's also fitted with one here on the rear side ladders literally just hook on to the rails just on both sides here now we do tell you you can leave your bedding up there so that's fine just be careful with uh how big your pillars are if they're very big with them generally on our a uh, drop down bed models we tell you to put that in the little alcove areas in the front which you've got on both sides of the vehicle here just depends how big they are a little bit of common sense for that the actual lifting open of the units just press them down and that will lift it open so you've got a little uh, foot foot rest sort of middle section that sits on here for that sort of rear facing option on there and that can just go just in there we've got then storage and that inside there is your manual point for winding the bed down if the bed fails electro electrically we've got your seat belts remembering it's just the four traveling seat belts on here we've got then access into the kitchen area so we've got a big split drawer so you'll see it's just split there and then underneath we've got another deep storage drawer We've got your three burners and again you've got an igniter so one two three and your little igniter is just there so you don't need to do anything just remember to let that cool down guys before you are closing the lid to use and store it away in the kitchen area you've got mains plug socket you've also got an extractor fan so that turns on the extractor there and then we've also got storage in the area above here just there We've got a sliding door, which you'll just need to remove the little press stud to slide that into there and it magnetises on to give you a privacy from the back room to the front. We do recommend in transit that you do travel with the strap in place just by clicking it just like that. We've got the grill, uh, sorry, the oven option here. So to get into it, you'll just need to lift up that catch and that will open up the oven option here. Just turn it round to the desired temperature that you want. Gives you a little bit of a guidance on there. And you've got a little light at the top. Just lights up to see how everything is cooking in there. So that's your cooking. The refrigeration unit is the new Dometic style refrigeration. So you want to press it in the middle and that will turn it on. And what we want to do then is we want to then turn it round and select either automatic 12 volt battery when the vehicle is running so this works off the alternator it won't work when you plugged not uh, engine is not running or you're not plugged in gas when you're connected through to gas or mains electric so in this instance i want it to run on automatic so i'll select auto flick it back and then what it will do in a minute it will then flick over to the automatic function what we want it to do also as well is and i'm going to show you on this manual side of it is select the option that we want we then want to come down to 
the option of whether we want the lights on, whether we want it to beep and make a sound, whether we want the fan to be on, which blows it around, whether we want the coolant to go on around the actual sort of seal on the freezer. And again, the button is a reverse on that option. So turn the unit off, you press and hold, and that will turn the unit off. If at all that you're not connected up to uh, any mains or you're on gas or anything like that, it will come up with warning signs, as you've seen there, just to let you know uh, that something isn't connected or something's not working. Just check the element that you're trying to do before you do it, but you'll see it opens from both sides now on these ones. So again, you can gain access on both of them from either side of the fridge unit. There is an additional TV holder just there, or a monitor holder that's been fitted. And then again, above, we've got the heater control. So the heater control, to turn it on, you press the middle button. Once the middle button's turned on, you'll then want to go to the option that you're going to select. Just to show you, we have mains now plugged in, and that is then staying unflashing. What we'll want to do then is, if we want to turn the temperature down, then we can turn the dial down, just like so. So, on the heating and the hot water, we've got four functions. The first one being the temperature that we want it inside the vehicle. So we want to set that to a desired temperature, turn the little dial down at the bottom, and then press the little button in the middle, and that will then allow you to decide what you want to do on that side of it. We then have the water heat inside of it, so which will then want to decide whether we want to then have it off. So you can have this heating running without having the hot water on. So you want to do that either on eco, which is slowly up to temperature, hot, which is fast, and then boost, which gets it up to heat as quick as possible. All runs off gas this, so again, we want to press the button, move it along, that will take us through to the fan, and that will then decide whether we want it on low, high or again if you run it on high for a short period of time you can then go into it and select the boost option so recapping temperature of the vehicle whether you want the water on or not that's your gas option because it's gas only and then you've got your fan to decide how fast or not you want the heating to blow away to turn the unit off you press and hold it until it tells you that it is off well pretty straightforward i think you'll find so into the bathroom area, we've got your mixer tap, your sink, plug socket, rinse. So this is for the toilet. So when you press that and you've got water in the system, then water will come out of here and go into the toilet. To open and shut the toilet valve, there's a little valve at the top back here. That's got to be closed, which is towards the front of the vehicle to allow you to remove the toilet cassette. If it's in the forward position towards the rear of the vehicle, you will not be able to pull that toilet cassette out. So just remember that little tip for you there. We've got toilet roll holder just there and storage for your belongings. We've also got our window in here and underneath here, we've got an opening area here, which is where you'll find your booster box for the TV area. On the opposite side, we've got your shower area. Again, just pushes in, and we've got a mixer tap, which will mix your hot and cold. Big shower head, and nice light ventilation. When traveling, we'll tell you to then just have it set just in that area there. On the bed itself, it's high adjustable as I've shown you, so this is in the higher position. You've got steps to give you access round. A couple of additional USB charging points down here. And we've got nice lights, storage in the wardrobe areas just there. The bed also lifts up, so it's on a ratchet, so you can just lift it up for it to store right away if you've got anything that you want to put underneath there that wants flattening or for travel. To put it down, you've got to go all the way back, and then that will flatten down just there. Same idea in here with the blinds and the fly screens, and you've got curtains as well as another TV point and an aerial point just up there. So on the water side of it, once we've filled up the water in the fresh water tank and we've closed the frost protection valve on the boiler, which I showed you before, we'll want to turn the taps to the hot 
we'll want to then lift the tap up. We'll want to then put the pump on as well and pump the water from the fresh water tank through the boiler into the actual uh, unit itself. Now you might find that there's air in this and it might spit and spurt, but do that until the air's come out and you've got a steady stream of water both here in the kitchen, the bathroom and try to do, do it on the shower as well. Once you've got that working, then you can go to that control panel above and decide to put your water on to heat the water. Now everything I've gone through with you will be in your handbook uh, and any queries and questions that you've got, then you can obviously give us a shout if you've got any qu uh, questions that I've not gone through. Your table here will slide forward and back and will spin around. It also extends and then will double the size of your table in that area for more guests to dine and slide around but you've got to use that little handle so remember the handle does slide with the table so it might move locations for you you can have that in any position just make sure you're leaving yourself space the seats both swivel on the passenger and drivers and you'll need to just move the little swivels to release it they will only lock in place when they are forward facing they don't when you're rear facing the camera is located just on the monitor here We've got cruise control down here and speed limiter, your indicators and your lights. This is a manual six speed gearbox with cab air conditioning, passenger airbag. We've got the map holder or the tablet phone holder. Comes to standard now. And we've got your hazard lights, central locking, and we've got a cooled area. So if you've got your aircon on it, it will cool in that area as well. You will find your Handbrake just down here to the right hand side of the driver's seats and again once the seats are spun around you've got your leather steering wheel and your mirror and electric window switches just to the, to the right here and you will see there that they are locked in place by driving off. The roof vent on the front has again a blind and a fly screen built into it. Oh, nice and neatly in there. It isn't an opening one on this particular model, so please just bear that in mind. But that basically is the instructional video for you on this lovely Remo. I'm sure you'll agree that it's a cracking little layout. I know it's going to a good home. The last thing to remember is when we're moving off, just turn it and press it, it'll tell you it's turned off. And then we'll make sure everything's secured and locked up. And then you're ready to start your onward journeys. But well, thanks for watching the video. We look forward to any comments and feedback. Most importantly, we look forward to you collecting and using this new pre-owned 2020 Remo Super Brig 69 Plus. Thank you.